Today we're going to be talking about how to use linear differential equations to solve basic problems about electrical circuits. In this particular problem, we've been given the basic circuit shown here, where the switch is located at the break in the circuit. We've been told that in this circuit, a battery is supplying a constant voltage of 40 volts, that the inductance is 2 henrys, the resistance is 10 ohms, and we've been given the initial condition I of 0 equals 0. Keep in mind that I is an equation for the current. We've been asked to find I of t, which models the current, and the current after 0.1 seconds. Now, as a reminder, I've written the formula for the standard form of a linear differential equation. This formula's particular application to circuits is written as a formula here. Now, it's important to note that in a circuit like this, E models voltage, so this here is going to be 40 volts, that R models resistance, so this is going to be 10 ohms, and that L models inductance, so this is going to be 2 henrys. Given that we already have these values, we just need to plug them into the formula for this linear differential equation, or at least its application to circuits. So notice we have the variable L here, which is the inductance of 2 henrys, so we can plug in 2 for L. We're going to leave di and dt because we want our linear differential equation in terms of i and t, so we'll leave that. Then we have plus ri. Well, we already know that r is 10 ohms, so we'll plug in 10 for r, leaving the i. And then we'll go ahead and plug in 40 for e of t, because e of t models voltage, and we know that a battery is supplying a constant voltage of 40. So we'll plug 40 in for e of t. Now, if you notice, with all these other variables gone, you can more directly compare this to the standard form of a linear differential equation. In standard form like this, we're always looking for an equation for y in terms of x. Here, with our application to circuits, we'll be looking for an equation for i in terms of t. Now we'll solve this like we would any other linear differential equation. The first thing we want to do is divide through our equation by 2 to remove the coefficient on this di over dt term. And we'll get di over dt plus 5i equals 20. Once we get to this point where we essentially have this y prime, or in our case, di over dt term isolated and on its own, we need to multiply through by the integrating factor. And remember that the integrating factor is e to the integral of p of x dx, where p of x is taken directly from our linear differential equation here. So we need to find our integrating factor. Well, p of x in our case is just the 5 here, it's the coefficient on this i variable. The only thing we need to be careful of here is that normally our integrating factor is written in terms of x. Our variable here is t, so we need to actually write the integrating factor as e to the integral of p of t dt. In our case, p of t is 5 here, so we'll get e to the integral of 5 dt, and when we integrate 5, of course, we'll get e to the 5t. Since e to the 5t is our integrating factor, we'll multiply through both the left and right hand side by e to the 5t. Doing so, we'll get e to the 5t times di over dt plus 5e to the 5t times i is equal to 20 e to the 5t. Now I always think this is the trickiest but coolest part of linear differential equations. We need to simplify the left hand side of this equation so that it's easier to integrate. And the way that we do that, once we multiply through by the integrating factor, this is actually pretty easy. The easiest way to think about it is to grab this d over dt right here, leaving the variable that's, that's in the numerator here, the i. We just want to take the d over dt part and move it out in front of this term. So what we get is d over dt of e to the 5t times i, because i was the only thing that was left of that, equals 20e to the 5t. Now the cool part about this is that pulling that d over dt out in front actually takes care of the entire left hand side. The way that you can prove that to yourself is if you take the derivative of e to the 5t times i using product rule, what you'll get is the entire left hand side. So by pulling out d over dt, what we say here is the left hand side is now equal to the derivative of e to the 5t i, which is true because if we took the derivative of what's inside the parentheses here, we would get the whole left hand side. 
So pulling that out is really all we have to do to simplify it. Now it's really easy for us to take the integral of both the left and right hand side. On the left hand side, the integral and derivative notation cancel one another like this. And what we're left with is simply e to the 5t times i on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we'll get 20e to the 5t, but then we have to divide by 5, the derivative of the exponent here. So we'll get 4e to the 5t, and we want to add c to account for our constant of integration. To solve this equation for i in terms of t, we'll divide both sides by e to the 5t, and on the left-hand side, we'll just be left with i, so we'll get i equals 4e to the 5t divided by e to the 5t is just 4, the e to the 5t cancels, then when we divide c by e to the 5t, we'll get c over e to the 5t. But that, of course, is the same thing as 4 plus c e to the negative 5t. We can move this entire thing here to the numerator just by making the exponent negative. Now that we've got the equation in this form, it's really easy for us to plug in our initial condition, i of 0 equals 0. So we'll say 0 equals 4 plus c e to the 0 e to the 0 is just 1, so we'll get 0 equals 4 plus c. Subtracting 4 from both sides, we get c equals negative 4. Now if we just plug that back into our equation for i, we'll get i equals 4 minus 4e to the negative 5t. If we want to, to simplify, we can factor out a 4 and get 4 times 1 minus e to the negative 5t. This will be our final answer for an equation for i, so when it said find i of t, We've done that. Remember that i will always be in terms of amperes. If we want to find the current after 0.1 seconds, all we do is plug in 0.1 for t, and we get i equals 4 times 1 minus e to the negative 5 times 0.1. And when we simplify that, we see that i is equal to approximately 1.57. And of course, we said i was in terms of amperes, so it's 1.57, and the units are capital A here. That's the current after 0.1 seconds. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.